So this video is going to be about taking a 425 engine and building it up into a 500. But uh, if you've got a 500 engine and you're trying to put it together, watch this video because the same rules apply. Uh, I just wanted to experiment. I had uh, a couple 425 engines laying around and uh, a bunch of 500 engine parts. And I needed a 500 engine, so I built one out of a 425. Uh, if you have a 500 sportsman and you're rebuilding your engine, you know, like I said, the same rules apply. I'll teach you how to build an engine from the ground up. So, you know, put the case halves together, the crank, uh, the piston. I'll show you how to set the timing. Um, so please watch the end of the video because uh, there'll be some important tips on um, what to do after you've installed the timing chain. Uh, before you install the engine, um, some pre-lube stuff. Um, also, um, watch for my next video because I'm going to drop this baby into a Polaris 500 Sportsman. And I'm going to show you how this fires up. And uh, we'll see if my test works. And uh, I've got a couple guys asking, hey, is this going to work in a 700? Uh, another guy said, hey, you know, he took out a three... 300 and turned it into 250 and had a lot of power. So I'm hoping the same thing's going to happen with this. So please watch the video, you know, hit like and subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop me a line. Thanks for watching. So, hey, today's video is powered by beer, something that keeps you going. So here's the deal I've got a 425 engine, 500 engine parts. Uh, this 425 block was cracked. So I got uh, two 425s case halves that are in good shape. Went and cleaned them all up. And uh, we're going to build a 500. And I'll show you how. Stay tuned. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind while you're building use lots of oil. Like, uh, put oil on everything while you're building. This is a crank out of a 425. Blew up the bearings. And we're going to slide that in there. Yeah, slid right in nice bearing. So next, you want to put your counterbalancer in. So let me get you in close here. There is a timing mark right here. I'm going to turn it like that. And when I put the counterbalancer in, there should be a timing mark right here. And we're going to line those two up. Two timing marks, they are lined up. The next step, we're going to put the oil pump in. Yeah, just as long as you put it back in the way you took it out, you should be fine. I like the hand start it just so I don't cross thread anything. Now you have shims. One shim goes here, one goes here, and then uh, once we put that gear on. Definitely don't want to forget your shims. Clean this up a little bit. Put that there. This gear that uh, drives the oil pump should matter uh, which way it goes on. As long as it meshes in with those gears. 
like so. All right, normally I wouldn't use high temp red RTV, but uh, I ran out of the black stuff. So what I'm doing is I got it on, I'm just smoothing it out. Do you want it gushing all over the place? I got my other case half that's all clean. Um, I'm gonna put uh, a little bit of oil in the bearings. I got some oil in there already. Just kind of free lube everything up. And then I'm gonna put the two case halves together. Keep in mind your um, your mechanical water pump seal slides over this. So when you're putting this together, you got to be careful uh, not to damage it. Never use enough oil. More oil you use, the better it's going to slide on. And here we go. Coming through here, good. There we go, perfect. Now we can go ahead and put screws in. There you have it, piece of cake. All right, so to build this right away, I top that the center, there's a mark here. And on this gear that drives your chain, there's a mark here. I go ahead and slide that on and keep that lined up right away. Then put my nut on, do the reverse threads, counterclockwise to tighten, and then put the impeller on just gonna snug this up and then uh, don't forget to tighten that nut and then there's an O-ring that goes in there. Right, soak that in a little oil. Bring it back to life. And that's going to go in there like so. There you have it. When assembled, bottom end on a 500. All right, now for the fun part. Let's get that, uh, that jug on. I got my uh, new piston, my new gasket, got everything cleaned up. I'm going to slide the 500 jug over the 500 piston on a 425 engine. We're going to see what this bad boy does. This is a piston ring compressor. And once I get this lined up right, it actually works out pretty slick.
nice part about this is take it off and take it right off the piston. Voila. Pretty slick, huh? There you have it, one piston installed. Now it's time to put the bolts in. There are two of them here. So then we got these four little guys. I got my 12 millimeter bolts in and now I'm going to just uh, take my gun and uh, snug them up and then I'll torque them down. I'm going to have to see what the torque specs are for them. Let's go ahead and torque them down in a crisscross pattern. All right, the next step, we're going to install that uh, plastic uh, chain guides in there. Let's make sure you do that first. Definitely you don't want to forget these bad boys because you forgot to put them on before you put the, the head on. It's a pain. So, so go here. That slides into that notch like so. Then goes in here, and then there's a bolt that'll hold that in place, which I gotta get. Okay, guys, just a little friendly reminder while you're building don't forget your doll pins. There's two that go here that look like that, and there were two down here, too. So, Now this uh, head gasket is kind of foolproof because you can only put it on one way. There's one small hole and the rest uh, are bigger. Your doll pins are only going to fit over that. See, you can't really screw it up. If you put it that way, it's not going to fit. So we're going to put this on. Now if you guys remember in the beginning of the video, I was talking about... Uh, I'm basically taking a 425 and turning it into a 500 and putting the 500 jug on and the 500 piston most of the other parts are 425 and everything's matching up perfectly um, everything I'm doing applies to just a, a 500 engine too because it's all similar and I did some research and uh, this is my 425 head I uh, did some cross-referencing the cam, the head, everything is the same for a 425 it is for a 500 so we're gonna go ahead put this guy on gotta watch your plastic uh, chain guide and there we have it and now we're gonna have to go through the torque sequence which is a little crazy if you watch, uh, if you subscribe to my channel and uh, watch that one video about uh, installing a head, um, it'll go through everything I'm about to show you here. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything. I'm just dropping the bolts in. I'm going to torque them down. And I'm going to put my chain on. And then I'm going to put my rockers on. Don't forget when you put these bolts on, you want to dip them in oil. That I usually like to do. I got some oil here, lubricate some. Now, the torque sequence for the Polaris is uh, goofy. You gotta tighten it, then loosen it, then tighten it, loosen it. And that's kind of the purpose of this oil. Uh, these bolts do end up stretching after you 
torque them down. So when you go to reuse them, you want to use oil, so kind of cuts into a little better. All right, I'm going to go ahead and torque these down. And also don't forget these two little screws on the side here as well. So get everything torqued down. Then go ahead and put your chain on. Get everything lined up. Um, I, put, I just recently posted a video on the uh, most accurate way to set your uh, timing chain. And uh, like I said, I'm not going to go through everything because otherwise this video is going to be really long. You can uh, check out my channel and uh, I'll post links on here too so you can uh, know where to go see what I'm doing. But uh, like I said, I'm taking a 425 and turning it into 500 and then I'm going to post a, a video of it running so you guys can see this will actually work. I mean a lot of these parts are compatible. But nobody knows because you look up the part numbers and they don't match. Well, a couple of years ago I used to work in an engine plant. And uh, what I learned there from building engines is we had one part and three different part numbers for the same part. So I like to experiment. I wanted to find out for myself. And I think I found that out. I mean, you know, same part, two different part numbers. So I'm going to build this bad boy and show you how it runs. Alright, let's go ahead and put that chain on. What I'm just going to do is weasel it down this way. Oh, that's one thing that you don't want to do. I'll lose it. Then we want to get that silver link on that timing mark. I also have a video of doing that. It's my recent video that just came out. Silver link with the timing mark. The timing mark on the gear. And the two silver links. The two indents. And the sprocket. Gotta love that one, it goes together. There. Nice. Right on. Okay, I've got my chain guides on, if you guys saw that. Next thing I'm going to do is put the chain tensioner on. Once I get these tight, and then I'm going to show you my little trick what I do. In my previous video, I had a subscriber mention something about the, uh, the timing chain and the, the chain tensioner. I had taken the, uh, the tensioner apart, and I always forget to mention these in my videos. Always kind of keep an eye on that one of your one of your timing issues could be your chain is stretched. So if you notice when you pull the tensioner out of the engine that it's all the way out. Let's see if I can't get it to do that. Push this in and it's all the way out. It's maxed out. There's little little notches on here. Then you know that uh, your, your timing chain might have some issues. So you might want to replace the timing chain. So I'm going to go ahead and take that nut off and there's a spring in there and that'll release the tension on that and then I'm going to go ahead and put that back together and then I'm going to put the spring in and the tensioner in that's going to tension up that chain really nice and then I'll put my uh, rockers on and adjust them to 0 0.006 for the valve lash and uh, this thing should pretty much be all done then 
All right, I decided I'm just going to show you guys because uh, I've had a lot of questions on that. So, like I said, you take that bolt out, press this in. That's going to push that in. And you put your new gasket and your, your bolts in, which I'm going to do right now. And <laughs> go figure, they give me the wrong gasket. <clears throat> that is not correct. Hang on. Ah, had another uh, gasket set, so. so. Go ahead and push that in. We're going to put that in. I locked out. So, what happens when you buy uh, aftermarket stuff? Sometimes they send you the wrong parts. So I'm going to go ahead and snug that up. I tend to rely on this gun too much. But, uh, I believe the uh, torque spec on that is uh, 6 inch pounds. Go ahead and shove this in. That's going to push that thing out and see if I can't. There you go, you heard it click. That's going to tighten my chain up while I'm doing that. Make sure it's uh, good and tight. <clears throat> I think that's a German word. <laughs> So the next thing I like to do is before you put your uh, your rockers on, rotate this about three times so that tensioner gives it a chance to work. It'll push out more. You'll get a more accurate reading when you uh, go adjust your valve lash. So I'm going to do that now as soon as I can find my gloves. <clears throat> Three. There we go. Now I can go ahead and put my, uh, my rockers on. So I got pretty lucky with this 425 I took apart. The block was cracked and uh, the cam and the lifters were all in great shape. The rockers I should say. Go ahead and put them on. I'm going to double check on that top dead center and then I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. So there you have it. She is all together. Chains tight. Rockers are in place. I just got to put the bolts in. Tighten them down, put the rocker cover on, and uh, another thing I like to do before I install this engine is um, the player sportsmen, they have a reserve tank on the side. Well, when you do your oil change, you're pouring oil into the reserve, and it eventually goes through your hoses into your pump. Well, that means you're starting your engine with no oil in it, so before I put uh, the stator on, uh, like through one of these holes here, I'll take about uh, about a quart of oil, maybe about half a quart. I'll tip this on its side. I'll fill that up, and I'll put the stator over the top. That way, when you go to fire this thing up, it's already got oil in it. She's going to be lubricated immediately. You're not waiting for oil to come through your reserve tank and through your hoses. So keep that in mind. Um, 
Now hit the like button if you uh, like this video. Hit subscribe. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Um, you know, I give you guys advice and help, and uh, some of you subscribers, you uh, you guys know about engines, and you give me tips too. So it's win-win for both of us. We help each other out. Um, like I said, hope you like this video, and like always, till next time.